They came to the other side of the sea, Mark into the country five. of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat immediately, a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him, and he had his dwelling among the tombs. If you look to your right, to my left, you'll see Jewish burial tombs carved on the facade of the rock. In the day of Jesus, the Sea of Galilee would have been in more this way. The geomorphologists tell us the sea would have been more in this way, but thus area of tombs. Okay? The village of the Gerasenes is about a half mile that way. The village is a half mile that way. The burial tombs are here. No one was able to bind him anymore, even with the chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn asunder by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. No one was strong enough to subdue him. One phenomenon of demonic possession is superhuman ability. You can have a paper hanger like Hitler become a powerful orbiter under demonic animation. You can have people can acquire superhuman strength under demonic animation. You have a demonic empowering of a person to perform beyond their natural capacity. And that's what was happening here. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains, going up here into Bashan, what today call the Golan Heights, and gashing himself with stones. Another common phenomena of demonic possession is not simply a mental illness, but a form of mental illness that is self-destructive. People tried to kill themselves, hurt themselves, mutilate themselves. <clears throat> this is going on. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, what business do we have with each other? Jesus, son of the most high God, I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had come saying to, to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Satan, we're told in the Old Testament, actually thinks there's a possibility of him winning. The king of Assyria thinketh in his mind that it is not so. But the demons know their fate. The demons know that Jesus is ultimately Lord. But let's continue. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now his name was not Legion. What he was saying is, there's a lot of us. It's not just one demon in this person. There was a multitude. And he said to him, my name is Legion. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send him out of the country or out of the region. The term is not territorial spirits. Territorial spirit is a description. The term is principality from Ephesians. Again, arche in Greek, rashiot in Hebrew. If you want to say a territorial spirit, that is a description. They did not want to be sent out of the region. Now there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. Again, the Jews over the other side of the Jordan at Bethsaidak, Capernaum, Chorazin would not have had swine. <coughs> these were mongrel, these were Hel Hellenized, semi-paganized Jews who lived in the area of the Genserines. The demons implored him saying, send us into the swine so that we may enter them. And Yeshua gave them permission. And coming out, the unclean spirits entered the swine and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea. Remember, it would have been closer than it is now, okay? It would have been closer than it is now. About 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. Their herds been ran away and reported it in the city and in the country. The city, again, about a half mile that way. It's a small excavation. And the people came to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed in his right mind, the very man who had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man, and all about the swine. And they began to implore him to leave their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was imploring him that he might accompany him. But he did not let him. He said, go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. He went this way to the Decapolis. This way, beginning with Hippo, would have been the first city of the Decapolis and proclaimed Jesus from there down towards Betshan. That's the Decapolis. So let's okay. understand this from the point of view of Midrash. Jesus said, cast not your pearls before swine.
swine and biblical typology are metaphors for people who mock the gospel, who reject the message of salvation. We do not waste our time with pigs. People who mock the word of God, who ridicule the way of salvation, Jesus calls them swine. Cast not your pearl before swine. Where does swine go? Into the lake, the lake of fire. Those who reject the gospel, those who mock the way of salvation, will go to the same place as the demons. What does Jesus say? Go ye to the place prepared for Satan and his angels. Hell was not made for people. Hell was made for devils and for Satan. It was not made for people. But people who do not repent and accept Jesus will go to that lake. It was a place prepared for Satan and his angels. No human being should have to go to hell. Calvinism is completely false. Jesus can save anybody. It's one thing to save anybody. Yes. Sir. But those who mocked and reject the gospel will go to the place prepared for Satan and his angels. Hallelujah. They will go into the lake together. That is what was happening metaphorically. Now notice when the man was crazy and out of his mind, and they couldn't even control him with chains, oh, he's crazy. Let him stay in the graveyard. He dwelt among the dead because he was spiritually dead. Okay? Unsaved people are spiritually dead. They dwell among the dead. That's their fate, unless they come to life. When somebody comes to faith in Jesus, Paul says, the power of sound mind. The power of sound mind. Once that happens, once he gets the power of sound mind, now they really don't want him around. When he was crazy, when he was hanging out in tombs, when he was breaking shackles, when he was violent and dangerous and self-destructive, ah, that's just him. When he became a Christian, now they didn't want him to Now we really gotta get rid of him. That's something, isn't it? That testifies to the human condition. The world hates Jesus Christ. They will take a crazy man before they will take a follower of Jesus. Please. There have been groups who have tried to say, we should all live in fellowship and live communally taking certain instances out of the Bible. When people joined Jesus, they joined and they sold everything and went with him. In some cases, in some places, that was true. and others, it wasn't. We have to look at every instance. This man wanted to leave and go follow Jesus. Jesus said, no, you follow me here. But notice Jesus left him in a hostile environment. He left him to testify to himself, to people who didn't even want him around. But now we had the power of sound mind to do it. Everybody knew this guy was a nut. Everybody knew what he had been. And the Lord left him here, and beginning in Hippos, and heading that direction towards our hotel, he began proclaiming Jesus. This is the place. Those are the tombs. The village is just over the brow of that hill. The sea would have been in further. You can see exactly where it would have been. Don't ask me why the only thing here is a military marker commemorating an Israeli battle. Uh, I don't know why people don't come here. This is one of the clearest places to see where something happened, where Jesus did something. And nobody seems interested. But I'm very interested, and I hope you have found it interesting. Amen.